everyone, it's Mrs. King Crosby. Welcome back to Properties and Materials. This is lesson 3.2, adding strength as a design goal. Today, we will introduce two new ingredients, gelatin and corn syrup. But before we do, let's do a quick review from our last lesson and video. Activity one, adding strength as a design goal. At the beginning of Jess Makes Hair Gel, Jess wanted his gel to have the properties of looking shiny and making spikes. Those were his first design goals. After Jess did some testing, he added two more design goals. He wanted his gel to have other properties too. No color and no smell. Today, let's think about another property we would like our glue to have. What property have we been designing our glues to have? Yep, stickiness. And remember, the property of stickiness is our first design goal. Well, engineers usually have a few different design goals when they are designing something. They have to make sure that whatever they design has certain properties. Engineers also think about the properties they do not want something to have. Like Jess, remember he decided he didn't want his gel to smell or to be green. So far, we worked on a glue that meets the design goal of being sticky. So besides stickiness, what other properties are important for a school glue to have? We did talk about that it needs to spread and it needs to be smooth. Let's look again at the possible uses for glue. We talked about construction projects, art projects, and word sorting, like we do in class where we cut and paste those words. Well, if we built a small tower out of lots of craft sticks, it might be heavy. So besides stickiness, what other property would we want our glue to have for use in construction projects? I bet you were thinking we would want the glue to have the property of being strong so the tower wouldn't fall apart. So in order to be able to use our glue to build structures, we need to add another design goal. Our glue needs to be strong. Today, we're going to investigate this question. How can mixtures be designed to have certain properties. What are the properties we want our glue mixtures to have? I bet you said strength. Yeah, it must be strong. So over the next few lessons, we'll be working to answer our investigation question as we figure out how to make a glue that is both sticky and strong. Activity two, introducing strength tests. Today, we will work with two new ingredients, gelatin and corn syrup. We will also use flour and cornstarch again. Remember, we talked a little bit about gelatin and corn syrup earlier. We also tried heating cornstarch and tested it for stickiness. And now that we've read Jess Makes Hair Gel and looked in the handbook of interesting ingredients, we already know a little bit more about gelatin and its properties. Today, we'll have the opportunity to make some observations of the new ingredients and set up a new kind of test to find out how strong they are. So turn to these pages in your packet. First, we will do part one of this activity. We will work together to observe wet ingredients and set up a strength test. Later in this lesson, we will observe the properties of the ingredients when they're dry. Then we will do a strength test on each ingredient. We're gonna make a card for one ingredient. You will write the name at the top of the card and use a stir stick to spread a small amount of the ingredient at the bottom. These boxes are where we will write observations of the properties of each wet ingredient. Make observations using your eyes only. You should not touch or taste any ingredients. Focus your observations on the important glue properties of each test ingredient, such as how sticky it is or how easily it spreads on the paper. After we observed an ingredient, we will press a bent paper clip into the wet dab of ingredient and leave the card on the tray to dry overnight. This is a tray of ingredients. Let's go over what we have. First, we have flour and water mixed together. Next, we have cornstarch and water that's been heated. Third, we have gelatin and water that's also been heated and cooled. And then we have corn syrup. We also have some spoons or stir sticks when we do our test. And we have our four plate, our four test cards. 
And then we have our paper clips that I will show you in a bit what we'll do to conduct this test. Activity three, observing ingredients and setting up tests. All right, let's start our test. We'll start with corn syrup. So I have my test card that says corn syrup. And I'm gonna take one of my stir sticks and put a little sample right in the middle of the card. And just going to put it right here. Maybe a little bit more so that we can make sure that there's enough. Okay, put that aside. One thing I noticed about the corn syrup that was that it was really runny because you could see on the card. So it was runny and it was very thin. Now I'm going to go with the corn starch and water that's been heated and cooled. So it looks like this mixture. Take a little sample, put it right there in the middle. Hmm. Well, it's pretty thick. And, but it's a little easy to spread that it's been heated. All right, so I'll put that right there. Slide those over. And next is my flour and water. Take my stir stick and get a little bit of my flour and water here. Wow, that is thick. Look at that. Maybe a little bit more. Finally, we're going to take the gelatin and water card, and here it is. It's been heated, so I'll take a little sample of that, and whoa, that is really thick. Put it right there. It's very sticky, as you can see, and thick. Great. Got a good amount there. And then finally, what we'll do is take our paper clips. So here is one of the paper clips. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do to put in our test cards. We're going to take this smaller little loop inside and pull it up. Okay. And then we're going to take the top part here and we're going to straighten it out. So we can create a, a hook to test our strength. And so what we'll do now is to take each of these paper clips and put it straight onto our test cards, right in the middle of our sample, our wet ingredient. So I'll put it over the flour and water, and then I'll put it over the cornstarch, push that in, and then finally I will do it over the corn syrup, and then we're going to let these test cards dry overnight and come back to now that we've done our tests, let's write observations of the properties of each wet ingredient. So if you have your sheet ready, let's go ahead and write this. So corn syrup, we observed that it was runny and thin. Corn starch and water, it was heated and cold, it was easy to spread, and it was also thick. Flour and water was thick. And gelatin and water heated was sticky and thick. Activity four, discussing how ingredients affect mixtures. Remember, a cause like adding an ingredient can have an effect. When you made your first glue mixture, how did each ingredient affect the properties of the mixture? Well, the mixture gained some of the properties of the ingredients. It got stickier and it got smoother. So imagine a mixture with two ingredients, such as chocolate, syrup, and milk. What properties of the ingredient milk does the mixture of chocolate milk have? Well, it's liquid and it's cold, and it's not sweet. Then what properties of the ingredient chocolate syrup does the mixture have? It's also a liquid, but it is sweet, chocolatey, and a little brown. So our key concept is mixtures may have a combination of properties of their ingredients. When we combine two or more ingredients, the mixture can take on the properties of those ingredients. Can you think of any other mixtures that take on the properties of their ingredients? Which ingredient that you observe today do you predict will be the strongest? And why? And what combinations of ingredients do you predict will make a strong glue and why? 
I'll give you a moment to think about these questions, or you can also pause the video and make your predictions. So let's go back to our chapter three question. What ingredients can be used to make a glue that is sticky and strong? We'll spend the rest of the chapter figuring out an answer to this question. But next, we will conduct our strength tests and gather other evidence about which ingredients might help to make a glue strong. Activity five, making observations and gathering test results. Our glue ingredients have dried and hardened. And I wanna let you know that I did this last night so that we could see the results today. So today we will observe our dried ingredients and test how strong they are. Remember when we collected and evaluated evidence about how sticky some of the glue ingredients are? Well, we will be doing the same thing, but we will focus on the design goal of being strong. We will hang metal washers on the paper clips to test how many each ingredient can hold. We'll go back to these pages in your packet. We did part one of this activity earlier in the lesson. Now we will do part two. Let's go over the directions. We'll observe each dried ingredient and predict how many washers it will hold. We'll record our observations and predictions. Let's do this together. As I show you, be sure to write down your observations of the dried ingredients. So here we are, fast forward, 24 hours later. I let this all dry. And so now we're going to be observing the dry ingredient. So here is the corn syrup. The corn syrup mm, looks clear and it did not really dry. Now let's look at the corn starch and water that's been heated and cooled. It's really chunky and it's white. And here's our flour and water. Look at that. It's the color is like tan and it looks very smooth. And then finally we have our gelatin and water that's been heated. The color is brown and it looks very thin. Here are the washers I was telling you about that we're going to use to do our strength tests, which we'll do very soon. Let's record our observations and predictions. So get your sheet out and under the column that says observations of dried ingredients, let's write down what we just observed. So corn syrup, we saw that it was clear. It did not dry. Corn starch and water, chunky and white. Flour and water, smooth and tan. And then finally, gelatin and water, brown, thin. Now we're about to do the strength test. In this very last column, we will write down the number of washers that were on the paper clip when it fell off. Hopefully by now you've recorded your prediction on how many washers each one of these cards will hold before it falls off, before the paper clip falls off. So let's go with the corn syrup first. I'm going to put in the first washer. There's one, two, three. Then oh, I'm gonna do four. I, I think four is all it's gonna take. The paper clip is sliding off. Now let's do the corn starch and water. Here we go. Start with the first paper clip. I mean first washer, one, two, three, four. Five. Oh, wow. Okay. That was loud. All right. So we had four for corn syrup and we have five for corn starch and water. Now we'll move on to our flour and water ingredients. So we'll start with one washer. So we're going to see how many washers it takes before the paper clip falls. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, wow, 
nine, ten. <laughs> Whoa, ten. Did you guys predict that? That was, this is strong. Okay, now finally, our gelatin and water. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, here we go. Ten. This is where the flower and water was. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. <laughs> Fourteen. Oh boy. Okay, so 14 for gelatin and water. Well, that was really fun. So we found out today with our strength test that gelatin and water had the most number of washers that hung on with a total of 14 washers. And corn syrup, that was pretty runny still, had four washers. That was the least number of, of washers. Well, we're done for today. So the next lesson, you'll be graphing the results using the data tool and looking for evidence in the handbook of interesting ingredients. Hope you guys had a lot of fun too. I'll see you next time.